What is up everybody? Today we are back in the wonderful land of Minecraftia and that means yes we are going to be testing some more myths. Now for those of you guys who are new to my channel or have never seen the series before, essentially what it is is we just go ahead and we take some user submitted or fan submitted myths, test them in Minecraft and see just how true my fans really are with their myths and uh, and how hard they could actually be to bust. So it is just like the normal Mythbusters if you guys have ever seen that on TV where we just go ahead and we take a myth, we test it and we see whether or not it is busted or confirmed. Now this is probably one of the most popular and most requested series on my channel and so I do want to go ahead and bring it back however in the past there's really been a shortage of myths and so over the past couple of days I've just been compiling some myths that you guys have left on my later videos or on my past videos rather and so today we are going to be taking a look at some of those myths. Now before we go ahead and we jump into the myths for today I would just like to go ahead and say that if you guys have any of your own myths that you guys would like to submit and possibly have tested in the next episode of Minecraft Mythbusters make sure you guys leave that down in the comments section because this series is literally not possible without you guys submitting myths so please do so down below and try and make sure that they are new myths that you we have never done before because I do have quite a few of these and so a lot of the myths that people submit are similar and so that's why they don't get tested because I've already probably done them before so original myths please do leave them down below now with that out of the way let's go ahead and jump directly into the myths for this episode and the first one actually comes from Jerry Trainer, who is actually somebody who has left us quite a few myths in the past and this one is is pretty unique and I've never actually thought to test it before but we are going to be doing it today and that is that you can go ahead and actually mine up diamond ore with any kind of pickaxe so long as it is underwater so you can see here in this chest of wonderfulness I just have a whole bunch of different pickaxes and down here we have some diamond ore that is not underwater and if I go ahead and I try and mine this up with any pickaxe that is below iron you're gonna see that I'm not gonna get anything back from this because all of us know how Minecraft works and that you have to have at least an iron pickaxe in order to mine up a diamond ore however according to Jerry Trainer, we can go ahead and mine up diamond ore underwater with literally any kind of pickaxe including a wooden one now assuming I don't drown here in the water which it looks like it's very possible is going to happen I'm just gonna come down here and try and I'm actually gonna use a stone pickaxe this time just because I think it might go a little bit faster and we're gonna see if we can actually go ahead and mine this up and get a diamond from this diamond ore underwater because we are using a um, stone pickaxe right now so you can see this is about to break it looks like we are going to start drowning a little bit ah hurry 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 hurry, hurry, hurry. and there so did I actually get a diamond from that I don't see one I need to come up for air really quick <gasps> And back down we go. Um, it doesn't appear. Oh, I'm crouching for some reason. It doesn't appear that there is a diamond down here. So it doesn't appear that that is actually true, Jerry. Jerry has had some pretty good miss in the past, and so I thought he might be telling us the truth with this one. But it doesn't actually appear that just because you are underwater, you can't get a diamond block or um, diamond ore from any kind of pickaxe. So it appears that this myth from Jerry is b -b 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 busted. Alright, so our next myth comes from Billy Kelly, and he says that if we go ahead and we jump off of a place that would normally cause us to take a fair bit of fall damage, we won't actually take as much damage if we are holding a sword in our hand. Now, before we go ahead and we actually test this, I am going to go ahead and eat some fish here, because I want to go ahead and make sure that we have a fair bit of health left. And uh, that way it'll make it a little bit easier for us to test just how much health we do lose when we fall. So to start off with this myth, obviously we are going to need to create a little spot for us to jump off of. So we'll just go ahead and put a couple of blocks up into the air here. And then we're going to jump off, see how many hearts of damage we lose, and then we're going to do it with a sword in our hand while holding LT and see if we take less damage. Now I think the idea here is that with the sword in our hand blocking, because obviously the left trigger will cause the sword to block, apparently you can like block off the ground and stop it from hurting you as much. I really don't know the, the thought behind it, but maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. Uh, either way, I'm just going to go ahead and walk off of this and we're going to see how much damage we take. Alright, uh, you can see there we took two and a half hearts worth of damage falling from this little sky tower here. Now if we go ahead and we make our way back up here to the top and do the same thing with the only difference being the sword in our hand, if I can learn how to place this, which there we go. And if we go ahead and we do the same thing, uh, let's go ahead and make sure we heal up that last half a heart. Sweet, we have the sword in our hand and apparently we're just going to be able to block the ground away. So here we go. Back on ground. Oh. Okay, uh, <laughs> okay, so that didn't work at all because we still lost two and a half hearts of health. I really don't know. Maybe you're supposed to left trigger right before you hit the ground and like tell the ground back, back you demon, back right, right before we hit the ground. So, oh, okay, we're just gonna fall again because I am an all star. So let me, you know, why am I doing this? Let me just go ahead and uh, disable exhaustion. There we go. That'll solve all of our problems. 
So we'll just go ahead and give this a minute to uh, to regen us. I am going to eat just to keep our, our health bar full. Because it, it makes me, it, it looks prettier when it's full. So we're just going to wait a second here. So I'm kind of sad because I just realized that I wasted my fish because I forgot that when you disable exhaustion, it still does take down your health bar. It just doesn't kill you. And so now I'm kind of sad about the fact that I had to waste my fish for no reason. But regardless, we will go ahead and come up here and test this for sure. Like I said, I think that we might just have to, to left trigger it right before we hit the ground. And that'll be the difference maker. So I'm actually going to jump this time uh, just because, you know, why not YOLO swag. And here we go. Whoop. Black. Oh. No, okay, so <laughs> so that definitely does not work. By using a sword to block right before you hit the ground or as you hit the ground or before you hit the ground, in no way, shape, or form does it cause you to take less damage. So if your friend ever tries to tell you that while you're falling, you just take your sword and you block and it'll stop the ground from punching you in the kneecap, they were lying. Your friend was lying. That's it. And so is Billy Kelly because he told us a fib and now I'm sad. So anyway, <laughs> I actually, I'm not sad. We're testing this that we're here for. And uh, I really do appreciate you leaving that one down below. However, it is indeed Busted. So our third and final myth for this episode actually comes from four different people and I went ahead and picked it because like I said there was four different people that wanted to see it and so I figured many of you guys might want to see it as well and that is essentially a spin on the idea that we can go ahead and cause animals and different mobs to go invisible. So you can see here I just have a whole bunch of different uh, spawn eggs here. I'm going to go ahead and put away the, uh, the zombie spawn egg there. And essentially what the myth is, is that if we go ahead and we throw a splash potion of invisibility at some NPCs or mobs, they will actually turn invisible. That's half of the myth. And the other half is that if we go ahead and we throw it at either an enderman or a spider, that we will still be able to see their eyes. However, their bodies will be invisible, which would really be kind of a cool thing. So let's go ahead and test, first of all, the fact that we can indeed make NPCs invisible. So here you can see I've gone ahead and just spawned myself a normal sheep. And if I throw this at him, we can see, wham! He's now invisible. Voila! So, I guess at least half of this myth is confirmed. You can still kind of see where he's at because of the little uh, the little bubbles, which is actually kind of creepy because it's just kind of random, it seems like. Oh, actually, I might have hit myself with that as well. But you can see he's over here uh, now invisible, and so that's a thing. So, I can't even... I can't tell where he is. So, <laughs> anyway, if we go ahead and we now test the myth that we can go ahead and make spiders and Enderman's eyes color or disappear... Or not disappear. Wait, what? No, the myth is <laughs> that if we go ahead and we hit these guys with a splash potion, they will actually turn invisible. However, we will still be able to see their eyes. So if we go ahead and we look at Spider-Man here. Let me just go and give him a little hit so he tries to kill us. And then, oh, 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 we're in survival mode. Go away. Okay, okay, that's awful. <laughs> no, stop, 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 stop. Please stop. Uh, okay, that's really creepy. Oh, that's really creepy. I forgot we were in survival mode. For some reason, I thought I was in creative mode. And so he wouldn't just keep attacking me and actually do damage. But you can see just how incredibly creepy that is. If you actually hit a spider. Oh, stop. Stop, stop, stop. Stop. Go away. No, bad. So if you actually go ahead and you hit a spider with a splash potion of invisibility. Get in there. Get in there. Get in there. Get, get in there. Uh, you can actually turn him invisible, everything except for his eyes. And if you're in survival mode like I made the mistake of doing, he will actually end up, you know, trying to kill you while being almost completely invisible. So I'm not actually entirely sure if he's right outside of this door or we actually managed to lose him because he's absolutely invisible. Okay, looks like we lost him. He might just be stuck on the side of the building here. Oh, yep, there he is. And so, so let's go ahead and run over here. But it looks like that is confirmed. We will go ahead and test it with an enderman just because I think it'll be kind of cool. Okay, same procedure. We'll just go ahead and hit him with hit him with that. And yes, you can see there are his eyes and nothing else. I'm not going to punch him or anything because he will absolutely decimate me and I'm not trying to die today. But uh, it is really kind of a cool little uh, little thing. I never knew that, that, was, uh, that that's how that worked. And I think that maybe the, uh, the Enderman skin that has him looking like Slenderman would really, really, really be a cool mix with this because I... I don't really know how that would work. Like, I don't think that the uh, the Enderman or the Slenderman has any eyes, so I'm not sure what would be left. Maybe just be like his mask or something. I don't know. You guys should test it out and let me know down in the comments section. But it does appear that this myth is indeed confirmed. And so we have a two busted myths and then one confirmed, which is really kind of cool. I was looking up there in the top left hand corner of my screen, and I thought, why is there a butterfly on this game? When did they add those in? But I guess it's actually just me being invisible, running with a, uh, a potion in my hand. <laughs> I was like, wow, butterflies, cool. Uh, but no, unfortunately, not. not quite yet in uh, in this version of Minecraft anyway. So, anyway, I think that will about do it for this episode of Minecraft Mythbusters. I really do appreciate all of you guys who have in the past and for this current episode submitted myths. And like I said, if you guys would like to submit any myths possibly to be tested in the next episode of Minecraft Mythbusters, feel free to drop those down in the comment section and when I'm going through those for the next episode, I may select your myth and you guys can see yourselves featured right here in one of these videos. And uh, other than that, I really do appreciate all of you guys watching this video and if you guys did enjoy this video and like 
like this series and want me to bring it back, you know, maybe even weekly, feel free to drop me a like down below and subscribe for some more Minecraft console content in the future. And I really do appreciate every single one of you that watched and you guys really do mean the world to me. And I will see all of you guys later with another video. Thanks again. See y'all later. Bye. Peace.